Welcome back, collectors. In this edition of Diecast Emporium, it's time to do the collection update for the wheel tractor scraper models, commonly referred to for the most part as scrapers. These are all my scrapers in 1 to 50 scale, uh, with the exception of the 1 to 48 scale CCM models, of course. If you are interested in seeing those, just YouTube search Diecast Emporium CCM collection. Uh, that should come up with a good result for you there to check those out. All right, so let's go on and get started with the review. So the first one that I have, this is one of the more interesting pairings um, that I have in the set. So both of these are first gear models in 1 to 50 scale. And again, because scrapers are larger pieces of equipment, it's a little bit difficult to put these on the spinny table, so we're not going to be doing that. So we have a case... IH Steiger 485 uh, eight-wheeled tractor with a Miskin D19 pull-behind pan scraper. So these two models were designed to go with each other. And what else is cool about the pull-behind is that you can actually link up multiple ones if you want to have more than one. So very nice model. Something unique. You don't see too many pull-behind scrapers, in, uh, in especially in 1-50 to 50 scale. And uh, kind of cool that First Gear did this. A lot of detail on the tractor, uh, as well as on the pull-behind scraper. Tons of functionality there, uh, of course. And yes, these already have been reviewed. And as with, if, you're, if you've seen any of these update videos or collection update videos, I don't go into in-depth review of any of these models because most of them have already been filmed. Uh, to have a showcase video on them, as is the case with these two. So just go ahead and look up my review on these if you want a closer look. But again, both made by First Gear, both in 1 to 50 scale. Certainly unique if you are, collect this type of equipment and uh, you want to add these to your collection. All right, next up, another unique scraper combination. And that is the K-Tech scraper set. That uh, came out a couple years ago for Con Expo, I believe 2017. And this is made by Motor Art. So this has a Volvo A40F uh, articulated dump truck, and it's towing the K-Tech ADT series uh, 1233 scraper. You know, for a Motor Art model, I must admit, um, this is actually quite nice. And the hydraulic line detail is pretty good on this whole thing let me just you know what? i'll just go ahead and attach it so you can see it yes i have reviewed this but look at the piping and the lines all throughout this the perforations on the uh, spill guard and the ejector plate so a very it's clear that uh, k-tech had very high standards for what they wanted and you can see that it definitely shows through and the unique thing about this is, you know, say you don't, this comes with the set, the Volvo, but if you wanted a Caterpillar articulated dump truck, you can do that, uh, take the dump bed off, turn this into a tractor or whatnot, and you can have a Cat uh, ADT pulling your K-Tech scraper. So that's, again, another option that's afforded to you, but that's what comes with the set. All right, on to the Cat scrapers. I have organized these not by how old they are, but by machine size class. So we'll start with Norscott's 2007 release of the 613G Elevating Scraper. Um, the elevating mechanism here, and you'll, that's the case with all of the elevating scrapers in 1 to 50 scale, unfortunately, is that I, it's, it's, it was always interesting to me that there wasn't more attention paid to the elevating mechanism, considering that that's the focal point of these. Uh, it's just a rubber belt, and it doesn't even it doesn't even really function that well. I mean, you can move it a little bit with your fingers if you want to, but it's not really recommended that you do that. Um, you do have your GPS pod up here. Your scraper bowl will go up and down. But really, that's kind of it. One of the... Nice things I like about this is that it actually had rubber mud flaps, which was different for the time. We're talking 2006, 2007 here. 
and not a bad looking scraper. Pretty small overall. 613 is not a particularly large vehicle. Um, and your ejector mechanism did raise and lower. But if you go back and look at, and I don't have any here to show you guys, but way back in the day, NZG made elevating scrapers, and they were way higher detailed than uh, the Norscott version. And we're talking, you know, 20 years before this one was made. You would have thought that uh, this, the standard would have been set and it would have been a lot better. But nevertheless, we'll continue on with our elevating theme here for a few more. Here's the Norscott Cat 623G. Uh, again, another elevating scraper. Norscott made three of these. You will see all three of them. This is the standard version, standard cat black and yellow. Again, the elevating mechanism is a rubber belt piece that is not very enjoyable to move because it's very tight. And with the age of this, this one was released in 2002, so we're talking almost 20 years old. Um, you got to be very careful with wear and tear of rubber parts. You don't want to break anything. But in terms of if you were to buy this just for a low boy load or just to set on a shelf, it's not horrible. But again, I would love to see a newer elevating scraper, an affordable, let me rephrase that, an affordable newer cat elevating scraper um, with the elevating mechanism that actually functions and works that isn't really you know, a rubber belt, something that's maybe a chain um, or some other composite material that mimics the real one a little bit better than rubber does. Let me know what you guys think down below. I know a lot of you are fans of scrapers and earth moving equipment. I'll be honest, scrapers are not typically my thing. I do like them, but they're not my most favorite of heavy equipment. But I know there's a lot of scraper enthusiasts that are out there. So let me know what you'd like to see for future models. You'll see here in the overview that we are, and I say we, the, the cat modeling community as a whole, we are way overdue for a new 1 to 50 scale cat scraper. So let me know down in the comments. Um, you never know who might be reading these comments. So leave your suggestions on what you want to see in the future. Uh, believe me, there are some there's some people that do watch these videos. So, All right, sticking with the 623s, here is... Norscott's attempt at their their own factory weathering that they did in 2006. They released about a half a dozen vehicles with factory weathering, and one of them was the 623G. So this is not a custom. This is the way you could buy it directly. And say what you will, but I actually like it. It was a different take. You even had mud splashes and stuff on the windshield, which, again, I always thought was... Very cool. And the parts that would wear or look dirty on the real machine, I, I thought for the most part they did a good job. The tires, the belt obviously would be dirty. Um, you know, the cutting blade, the cutting edge. For the most part, everything that would be really worn or dirty, even there's even the push block back here is all scraped up. You know, they did their research, so it wasn't, you know, half-butt attempt on anything, so I think they did a good job. But, way before these, and again, I, I'm not going by uh, date on these machines, I'm going by size. Ertl, and then quickly followed by Norscott, did this. This is the 631E, which is a uh, larger single-engine scraper. And i got to tell you, for the time... This was not a bad machine. You had a functioning scraper bowl, which uh, the apron lifted up and down, which I just demonstrated. You had a ejector plate that moved forward. It had very good range of articulation. So for the early 90s, this was not a bad piece. And uh, Ertl sold tons of these. And... When Norscott took over the license in 1998, uh, this was one of the very first that models that they produced in their first year. As you can see there, this is the Norscott one. But the same mold and the same casting as the Ertl one. And we're going slightly out of, old, out of order here with size, which will make sense here in a minute. 
Um, here is the Tonkin Replicas 621K. These are still available today in the Diecast Masters um, Highline series. The main difference there is they upped the quality control on these and they added our um, highly trained, very diverse operator, Bob. So he is uh, he's in the cab of these scrapers. And the 621 is a single engine scraper, and the other one, the 627, is a twin engine scraper. When these were first released, despite um, some quality control issues that sometimes happen, these were generally well received. Um, these K series scrapers had a lot of detail, particularly the hydraulic lines around the gooseneck and everything else. Warning labels and things were relatively new. On, uh, on models because this again was before Diecast Masters and uh, it was different something new but like I like I said unfortunately take the good with the bad with everything in life right and a lot of these did have some severe quality control issues I think it took two for uh, me to get one in one piece but again you'll have that all right Next, the other Tonkin scraper. This is the 627K. This is the twin engine one, aptly named for those new viewers because it has two engines, one in the rear, one up front. Now, if you were a collector of a certain financial status, um, you probably bought two of these because you could mimic the push-pull mechanism that you would see in the real life. This would hook over the back of this on your other one so you can you know again uh, replicator display push pull mechanisms down in a cut or the pit same case is true with the 657 that you'll see in a minute but um, again besides some quality control issues generally speaking not to beat a dead horse but these were these were pretty well received very popular among the model community I myself did like them and uh, they were solid And Tonkin did make a specialty version of the 627K shortly before their license was not renewed by Caterpillar. And here it is. This is the 627K in gold chrome finish, they called it. Limited number of these produced. Uh, this is one of the, I believe this is, I think, just for you guys, this is the first or second time this has been out of the box. I think I reviewed it, and uh, this is the second time. So, nice looking. You know me with unique and special commemorative paint jobs on cap machines. I like them. This is no different. And the last model. Actually, before I do that, you know what? I missed something. Gosh darn it, I knew that was going to happen. Let's go back to the 623s for a minute. And remember I told you that there were three? Well, I only showed you two. And that's because I had the third sitting over here in the box. Why did I have it in the box? Well, if you can look right there, I've never taken this out of the box. For one reason or another, I bought this new in 2002, right there. And I've never taken this out of the box. So, there it is. Did want to show it to you. Obviously, it's in the military camouflage. This fully functioning military variant of the 623G elevating scraper features accurate markings along with a camouflage paint scheme painstakingly reproduced using official blueprints and military colors. Not entirely sure if that's 100% accurate, and that's definitely not a 623 elevating scraper right there. But there you have it. On the back shows you the other two in 1 to 50 scale. And there's actually a uh, 950 or 980G wheel loader that's also in this collection too. So there is the third of the 623G. So you have the standard cat black and yellow, the uh, Machines at Work series, and then the military version.
All right, so let's conclude the video with currently the largest scraper in the range that you can get. Here it is, the Norscott Cat 657G. Recently added to the Diecast Masters Core Classic line. Now, as of the filming of this video, I don't have a sample of that to show you guys. I hope to have that very, very soon. Um, but this is the original. This is the Norscott one, the 657G. The Diecast Masters version has been updated with some, uh, some slight shiggles, is a word I like to use. Um, you can Google that. Hopefully, most of you guys understand what that is. But this is the original from 2007, another one of the models that Cat wanted out that model year to uh, show off the new trade dress. And this is a monster. This model is very, very large. Another twin-engine scraper. And another one that if you had the means, which I certainly didn't, definitely not back in 2007, I was in high school, um, that a lot of collectors bought at least two of for the push-pull that you could mimic. And I wish I, I wish I was better with names, but there was a collector. Somebody uh, repainted one of these in like a cat mining white. And forgive me, I don't remember who it was, but man, that was an awesome custom of this. But there you have it. This is the largest cat uh, die cast scraper that you can get by the big names um, that aren't CCM. And... Yeah, I mean, this this thing for the time had metal handrails and um, certainly was very, very popular. Show you the other side of this thing. And kind of show you the inside of the scraper bowl there. And here is the rear. So if you're into big earth-moving vehicles... This is definitely one that, uh, if you don't already own, you probably want to put on your proverbial wish list. So, there you have it, collectors. That is my entire collection, minus CCM, of Caterpillar and other brands, Earth Movers, Scrapers, Wheel Tractor Scrapers, whichever you prefer. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Stay safe, thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.